Good morning, everybody. It's me, Rosa Ashby Matoire, Miss Rosa, coming to you from the Rapids Parish Library. I hope you're awake and, uh, and alert this morning because I've got some stories to tell you. Now, you know when Ms. Rosa comes to the library, I always bring things for you to see and things that we can talk about. So I've done that today as well. And we're talking about tales. And I wanted to highlight the fact that my stories are called Butterbean Tales. Now, you've probably heard of a Butterbean and you've heard of tales. And uh, that's the name that I use for my stories, but I'm gonna tell you why today. It seems that when Miss Rosa was a little girl, if you can imagine that ever being, when I was a little girl, I loved butter, is what I was told. So if there was butter on the table, I was climbing up on the table and I was sticking my finger in the butter and I was eating the butter. Now, I don't remember that, and that might be one of those fairy tales that they told, but that's what they told me. I even got big enough to get in the refrigerator and stick my finger in the butter and eat the butter. So, because of that, my daddy always called me his little butter bean. Butter bean. Now, he was the only one that ever called me that. So, if you see me on the street, watch out if you're trying to say butter bean. But... Never mind. I guess it's okay at this point because I named my stories Butterbean Tales in honor of my dad and him calling me Butterbean all those many, 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 many years ago. So that's how that came about. So today's tales that I'm bringing to you are uh, from a couple of particular sources. One uh, source in particular uh, is fables, Aesop's fables in particular. So you may have heard that name before, Aesop, and may have heard about fables. But let me tell you a little bit of something about Aesop, and I'm going to tell you in a little, uh, a little chant. Aesop was an African, African, African. Aesop was an African who lived in Greece. He told many stories, stories, stories. He told many stories as a way to teach. So this morning, I'll teach you a couple of things with a couple of Aesop fables. Now, I got that little chant from a dear uh, storytelling friend of mine, Sharon Holly, who lives in uh, Brooklyn, New York. Thank you, Sharon. Now, this particular tale, this first tale, is a tale about a man and his son and a donkey. Now, one day, long, long time ago, the man and his son were walking to town and they were walking along leading their donkey with a rope. Now they walked and walked and walked and they were having a nice day, beautiful day outside and they walked along their journey going to town. Well, this man came to them as they were going to town and the man said, don't you know donkeys are to be rode upon? And the boy and the man looked at each other and they said, hmm, that's right. So the man helped his son get up on the donkey's back and the man took the rope and he led the donkey along as they were going to town. Now the boy felt good. He was happy riding on the donkey. The man felt good walking along, pulling the rope and the donkey well, he felt pretty good too. So they were walking along and walking along and walking along. And they came up on this group of people. And these people were looking and they were looking and they were saying, can you believe the youth of today? Now this boy is sitting up on this donkey 
riding along all happy, and his daddy is walking and walking and pulling this rope with this donkey behind, and it is hot out here. This young man is a poor example of the youth of today. Well, the daddy and the boy heard that, and the boy was almost upset to the point of crying because he didn't, he didn't know why they were talking about him so poorly. And the dad and the boy looked at each other and they said, they're right. Well, dad helped his son down to the ground. Dad climbed up on the donkey and the boy took the rope and they went about on their way to town. Now, this went along, went along pretty well. The daddy was comfortable on the donkey. Donkey was okay with it, and the boy was all right walking alongside. Now, they came to another group of people who were staring, and they were whispering to each other. And then when they got close enough, the dad heard them say, that is such a poor example of parenting. He's got his young boy walking alongside him as he rides up on this donkey. That is such a shame. He just should be ashamed of himself. Well, the dad looked at the boy, and the boy looked at the dad. And then the dad pulled the boy up and helped him get on the donkey with him. Aha, uh -huh. this had to be good. So he had the boy in front of him, and they were both riding the donkey. And they went along on their way closer and closer to town. Everything was going well until they came up on this lady. And she was looking and she was looking and she said, the shame of it all. Both of you riding on top of that poor donkey? I'm just going to have to call animal control. And she looked and looked and she fussed and fussed. And the dad and the son felt so bad that they both climbed down off the donkey. Well, they got down and they looked at each other and they said, she's right. But what could they do? So they thought for a while. They thought really hard and they decided. They got a long, strong pole and they got some rope and they tied the donkey's feet together and tied him to the pole. He was hanging off the pole and they hoisted him up so the daddy and the son were walking along carrying the donkey. Oh my goodness, what a sight to see. Some people were laughing, some people were outraged, some people didn't know what to think. But they walked along, they walked along struggling with this big heavy donkey. The donkey was not happy at all, and he was squirming and squirming and trying to turn and trying to turn until finally he got one of his legs loose and he started kicking and kicking until he kicked his way out of those ropes and off that pole. And that donkey ran away and that boy and dad never saw that donkey again. Now there was one old man that had been walking along the whole time, the whole time of this journey with the dad and the boy. And he just looked at the both of them and he said, hmm, you can't please everybody. And that's the end of that story. Aesop was an African, African, African. Aesop was an African who lived in Greece. He told many stories, stories, stories. He told many stories as a way to teach. Now, let's see if we can learn something from this little story. This is a story about a lion and a mouse. The lion, of course, is the king of the jungle, and he was out on one of his raw walks, and he walked along in the jungle, and he was feeling good about himself because, after all, he was the king. And he roared every now and then. He roared. Well, he had walked and he would roared, so now he was tired, and he was ready to take a nap. So the lion lay down 
on the cool ground and he went to sleep. Now, later on, along came a little mouse. Now this mouse had never seen a lion up close before. So the, the mouse tipped around very quietly, very lightly, and he ran up on the lion's back and he ran across the lion, and he ran until he got to the lion's head and his big, beautiful mane, and he was playing in the lion's hair. He said, oh, this is nice. And then he ran down, ran down his front leg, and just as he came off the lion's front leg, the lion opened his eyes, and he looked at that lion, at that mouse, and he put his big foot down on the mouse's tail. The mouse was so scared. She was so scared. She said, oh, please, please, Sir King, please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. And the lion said, what are you doing? And the mouse said, oh, I was just admiring your beautiful mane. I'd never seen it up close before. Please don't eat me. Please don't eat me. And the lion said, I think I will just eat you up. So the tiny mouse said, please, please, please don't eat me. I'm tiny, but if you let me go, one day I might be able to do big things and I might be able to help you. Well, that just tickled that line. He started laughing. He was laughing. He was laughing so hard. You you tiny little thing, how could you ever be able to help me? Be gone, be gone with you, be gone with you. And he was so tickled, he just laughed and laughed and laughed, and the little mouse ran away. Well, long, long time after that, the lion was out on one of his raw walks, and he was strolling along in the jungle, and he was roaring a roar every now and then, and walking along when he stepped into a trap. There was a trap that some hunters had left, and when he stepped into that trap, it caught him and it pulled him way up high in a big net, and he couldn't get away from that. He couldn't get out of the net, and he was swinging there in the trees, and he'd roar, and he'd roar, and nobody came to help him until a little bit later, here came this little mouse, and she ran up, and she said, oh my goodness, the king is in trouble. So she climbed up the net, she climbed all the way up to the rope at the top of it, and she started gnawing away at that rope with her very, very sharp teeth. She gnawed, and she gnawed, and she gnawed until she cut straight through that rope, and the net fell and opened up, and the lion was free. Now, the lion remembered this little mouse, and the lion remembered that this teeny tiny mouse said that she might be able to do big things. So, it doesn't matter if you're tiny, tiny, you can do great things. And that's the end of that story. Now, that was another fable from Aesop. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got the lessons from those. It's all about what you take away. Now, I want to show you something, a little uh, segue. Um, if you can see, I have my drums around me. This drum is called a dun-dun drum. It's the bigger of the two. And... Um, I use these sticks to play this drum um, because it's, or you could use your hands to play it if you wanted to, but I use the sticks. This is a djembe drum, and I've shown this to you before, but just a uh, quick refresher. This is my djembe drum, and it's made from a tree um, trunk and carved and dried and treated, decorated, tuned and everything. And the djembe drum uh, dates back 
thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And the top of it is a skin, usually a goat skin or like a cow skin, something like that. And um, you always know it's a djembe because it kind of looks like a goblet or like a cup. See the handle there? It looks kind of like a cup. So these are your uh, two of your African drums. Okay, um, now I want to tell you another story. This story is about a man and his wife. And of course, this story happened long, 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 way, way once upon a time. This man and his wife lived back in the forest. They didn't have very much at all, little place to live, uh, very little food, because not much grew where they lived except trees and maybe some potatoes. So they had some potatoes and the wife would cook potatoes. And they didn't have French fries back then, which we probably could have eaten every day, but she could boil the potatoes and she could bake the potatoes and she could make soup. So her go-to was potato soup every day. She boiled the potatoes and it would be potato soup. Well, this man worked hard. He went out and he cut trees to try to make money. Now, he couldn't just cut down every tree. It had to be specific trees that looked really, really good that would sell in the marketplace because people needed to build specific things. So he searched hard day in and day out to find the perfect tree to cut down. So one day, early, early in the morning, he went out to find the perfect tree went out and he searched far, he searched wide, until he came upon this group of trees. And in that group of trees was this perfect tree. So he got out his ax, which was sharp and shiny, and he went to the tree and he raised that ax up in the air. And just as he was coming down to hit that tree, he heard, don't cut the tree, don't cut the tree, don't cut this tree. Well, he stopped and he looked around, he looked around and around and he didn't see anything. So he stood there for a little while, listening, listening, and he didn't hear anything. So he said, oh man, that must be just my imagination. So he took his ax raised it up in the air, and he was coming down at the tree. Don't cut this tree! Please don't cut this tree! Don't cut this tree! Well, he stopped. And this time, he walked around the tree. He walked around the tree, and he looked, and he looked up, and in the top of that tree was this tiny little man. The man said, please, don't cut this tree. This is a very special tree. If you spare this tree, I will give you three wishes. And the man looked and he looked at this little man again and really couldn't believe what he was saying. And he said, three wishes? He said, yes, yes. If you spare this tree, I will give you three wishes, whatever you want. Man said, oh, okay, okay. So he took his ax and he put it back in its sack and then he walked away. He thought that he was just hungry and delirious, so he walked on home. Well, he walked home, walked up the steps, walked on the porch, walked in the door and his wife had his lunch ready for him and it was potato soup. And he saw that bowl of potato soup and he said, oh man, not soup again. I am so tired of soup. Oh my goodness. Oh, I wish I had a big juicy sausage. And bam, bam, boom, out of nowhere came this big sausage. 
hanging from his nose. And he looked down, and there was the sausage. And he said, what happened? How did this happen? What in the world is going on? And his wife turned around and said, oh my goodness, there's a sausage hanging from your nose. What happened? What in the world is that? What's going on? And he was so scared, but the thought came to him. The wish, it was for real. The wish is true, it's true, it's true. The wish is true. And the wife was trying to calm him down. What wish are you talking about? What are you talking about? What's true, what's true? He told her the story about the special tree and about the man saying that he could have three wishes. So it must be true because he just wished he had a sausage. Well, the wife said, a sausage? We could have had a big fine mansion, all the money in the world, and you waste a wish on a sausage? My mama told me I should not have married you. And he said, I am going to wish this sausage off my nose. And she said, no, no, we're going to think about it and we'll decide what we want to do. My mama told me I should never marry you. And here you are, a waste of space and energy. And she started fussing at that man and she was fussing at him. And he was already upset about the sausage being on his nose. And he got more and more upset. And he said, I wish this sausage was on your nose. And bam, bam, boom, bam, just like that. The sausage was off his nose and on her nose. And she said, I cannot believe that you wished this sausage on my nose. You got to get it off. You got to get it off. And he said, well, no, then I'd be wasting a wish now, wouldn't I? Well, they went off back and forth, back and forth. And she said, I want this sausage off my nose right now. You have to wish this sausage off my nose. Well, think about it. He'd use one, one, one wish to get the sausage on his nose. Then he got upset and he used the second wish to put the sausage on her nose, which means he only had what? One wish left. So what should he do with that one wish? Should he get the sausage off his wife's nose? Or perhaps should they just buy a whole, get a whole lot of money and buy anything that they want? Or what should he do? So before wishing, he said, I know what, I know what. Let's just try cutting it off your nose. Let's try that. So they get, got a knife and he started trying to cut the sausage and the more he cut, it just came right back. It was not getting off her nose. He tried pulling it. They pulled together. They were pulling this sausage, pulling the sausage. The sausage would not come off her nose. She cried, he cried. They were both so upset. And finally, finally, he said, I love you so much. I wish the sausage was off your nose. Bam, bam, boom, bam. And the sausage was gone. Gone away forever. So he didn't have the sausage. He only had potato soup. But he had his wife, and he loved her, and she loved him. And I guess they lived happily ever after. But every day he went out into the woods trying to find that special tree again because he knew if he could find that special tree again, maybe he could get some more wishes. And that's the end of that story. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, now. I'm going to um, end this session with, um, well, a couple of things that I wanted to show you. Um, last time I showed you this, the tongue drum, which was my newest thing, still is the newest thing. And I guess you could hear that, but you can 
use your fingers to play this drum, or I like to use the mallet. It gives it a, a different sound. And this is just one size. They come much smaller, and then they come bigger as well. Now, I have the numbers on here because I'm just learning how to play it. And you can um, use the numbers to corresponding in books, and you can play different songs. So this is how it sounds. It's kind of a melodious sound. And I'm told that a lot of people use the tongue drums um, for meditation because of the sound. It's such a pleasing sound, and they use that for meditation um, or like yoga and, and different things like that. So it, it's, it's really nice, and I enjoy playing it um, and learning how to play it. So this is a tongue drum. And then our old favorite, the shake array. This is my shake array. Um, the shake array is made from a gourd. This is uh, like a, feels like wood, but it's a gourd. Gourds grow a lot of different places. They, uh, they grow in Louisiana as well. People grow them. Uh, you might see them smaller than this, and people use it because it's kind of wooden-like. They make birdhouses. I've seen birdhouses made out of them and a lot of different crafts, and they paint them, and they make a lot of different things out of them. But in Africa, uh, especially in Africa, the gourd is used for so many different things. It's used to make instruments, but also because of the, the wooden-like, you can make spoons and forks and plates and cups and just anything. Uh, with guards, and, and people still uh, use guards extensively today. But in particular, we make um, shake arrays. This is a shake array uh, with the guard, and then you weave the beads around it. These are beads on this one, but I have others that have shells um, on them um, and different kinds of beads on them. So this is a shake array. And uh, you play it by hitting the bottom. And then you can hear the beads. So it makes different sounds. But this is my shake array. So that's how I'm going to end today uh, with the shake array. Now, um, usually at our shows, at my um, shows, I teach you the, the closing song with the shake array. And it's an African chant, and uh, that's called, Did you, Fe Did you Feed My Cow? And a lot of you may remember it if you've ever been to the library to, um, to my summer reading programs. But I'll teach it to you, and you can sing along. I'll ask you, uh, did you feed my cow? What you gonna say? Yes, ma'am. Great job. And I'll ask you, what did you feed her? And you're gonna say, Oats and hay. Gonna say oats and hay. Just say it out loud. Oats and hay. Okay, good. And I'll ask you, did you milk my cow? And what you gonna say? Yes, ma'am. Great. And then I'll ask you, how did you milk her? And you're gonna do this swish, swish, swish. Swish, swish, swish. Okay, cool. Okay. And I'll ask you, did my cow die? And you'll say, Yes, ma'am. Okay, and how did she die? <laughs> cool. Okay, and then I'll ask you, did the buzzards come? And you say, Yes, ma'am. And then I'll say, how did they come? And you're going to say, flop, flop, flop. Flop, flop, flop. Very good. So we're going to do that. And we're going to do it um, with the shake array. Did you feed my cow? Yes, ma'am. Did you feed my cow? Yes, ma'am. Well, what did you feed her? Oh, then hey. What did you feed her? Oh, then hey. Did you milk my cow? Yes, ma'am. Did you milk my cow? Yes, ma'am. Well, how did you milk her? Yes, yes, yes. How did you milk her? Yes, yes, yes. Did my cow? Yeah.
Thank you.